Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. But if I roll down this page, got a little about section here. Watch what happens when it rolls off the top there. It's going to disappear. A little button's going to appear with the about us there. Same with this little services section. And as you can see, we got them rolling over. Little parallax background there or fixed position background. Same with the projects, same with the features. If we want to go back up, click on the button. It'll take us to features and the button will disappear. That will take us to projects, button will disappear, services, etc. And obviously back up to the about us. And if you go back down again, it'll repeat that. Really easy to do. And that's a really nice little interactive feature to have on your website. So let's get it done. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Okay, once loaded, let's go down or we'll delete all of these sections I've got here. And start from scratch. Okay. Well, let's build our first section. I'm going to click on any of these sections. I'm going to put it sort of, well, a little bit down our page here so we got some scrolling room. So click on any of these sections, hit the little blue button to add a new section. I'm going to use a regular section for this today. Inside my section, I'm going to put a single column. Now inside the column, I'm just going to put a little blurb module. And this is your about or services or whatever, but this will work for any section. Should put in whatever content you want. Like I say, I'm going to use this blurb module. We'll change that to about us. I'll throw a bit of content in there. So let's select that and just paste in my new content. Great. I'm going to roll down a little bit more. I'm going to use an icon rather than an image there. So I'm going to hit the little switch. Let's use a little person module. I think that's the one I used before. Fantastic. Okay, let's go to the design tab. Image and icon, I want my icon to be white. It'll disappear into that background, but I'm going to change that section background in a moment, which will bring it back. I'll leave it the size it is. And let's roll on down into the text. I'm going to roll that all into the middle. In fact, I'm going to justify it. I'm going to make it light in color. It'll disappear into the background as well. And let's save this. I'm going to go into the row that it's sitting in. And I'm going to give it a background color so we can see that content a little bit better. Plus, when I put an image in the section background, we'll still be able to read this writing nicely. I'm going to take the opacity down. I clicked on the black. I clicked on the field here. I'm going to take this opacity slider down so we can see through it a little bit. Perhaps around a 75 or 80 percent when I put an image in the background there. I want a little bit more padding on the bottom. I'm going to round out these corners. So let's close out the background there. We'll go to design. Spacing. Actually, I think the padding is okay on the top there. Let's just put 50 on the bottom, see what that looks like. I think that'll work for me. I'm going to go into the border. I'm going to round off these corners here. That chain will be checked by default. Just put your cursor in the first box. I'm going to put in 30. It'll put in the picks for me. As the chain's checked, it does all four at once. Great. Okay, well, let's just make that title a little bit bigger here back in our little blurb module. And we could spread this out as well so it takes up a little bit more room within our row here. To do that, firstly, let's make this title a bit bigger by clicking on the paintbrush associated with it. I'm going to make it perhaps semi-bold. I'm going to leave it on the default font. Plenty of fonts to choose from. Just roll over one. It'll give you an example of that font. Like I say, I'm going to leave mine on the default. Let's uppercase it. And let's perhaps make it 40 pixels. Great. If you want to spread the content out, still in design, if we close up our title text here and go down a little bit to sizing there. By default, blurb content width is set to 550 pixels. If you put it to 100 and the percent sign, It'll take up all the available space. That's great, but I need to put a bit of padding left and right. So I don't want it hitting the sides there. So if we close up sizing, we've got spacing just below. Here's the left and right padding. 
let's perhaps give it 5%. Great, hit the chain, and I'll do the other side. Great, that's going to work perfectly for me. Let's save this now. And we'll just put a little parallax background in, or fixed position actually. Blue tab for the section, background's always under content. Third tab along is our background image. Click on the little plus. I'll throw in the same image as I threw in before, which was that one, I believe. And just down below, we've got our use parallax effect switch. I'm going to switch it to on, but I don't want true parallax, because if I do that, that's fine. I want what they call CSS parallax, which is also fixed position background. Now, when I roll up and down, it stays exactly where it is. And when I add more sections on top of this, we can make them link so it stays there through all of our sections. And I'll show you that in a moment. Well, let's save that little section there. What I'm going to do now is we want this to roll up. It wants to disappear up here. We're going to have a new section underneath. We want to have a button appear on the left hand side there when we've rolled up. So let's add a new row for this today. Just going to hit the plus to add a new row. Again, I'm going to put a single column in there. Inside, I'm going to put a button. And let's call it About Us 2. In fact, I'm going to make that lowercase. I'm going to copy it, Control C. I'm going to give this the admin label of About. I'm just going to save that. I'm going to copy my About here. I'm going to go in to my section. I'm going to give it a CSS ID by going over to advanced CSS IDs and classes. Make sure you put it in the ID, not the class. I'm going to paste the about in there. So this section's now got a CSS ID of about, which means we can link our button to it if we want to. I know the button's in the actual section, but this is for when we roll up and all that's left is the button. It'll take us back up to the top of this section. As we've given it a CSS ID of about, let's now go back into our button. And for the link, we can put a hashtag or CSS IDs. You put a hashtag in when you're trying to link to them. And then Control V will paste in the CSS ID name there. Now this button, when you click on it, always go to the top of this section here. Great. Well, let's make this button a little bit more interesting. So we go over to the Design tab, down to the button. Hit the Use Custom Styles for our button. Button text color, I'm going to make white. Button background just down below, I'm going to make it a black. But again, I'm going to pull that opacity down so we've got a little hint of the website behind it there. Now the button border, it's two picks at the moment. I'm going to take it down to one pick. So I'm going to leave it white, but I want to change its color on hover. Common to all DV modules, if you hover over the dark writing within a module, you'll see these icons appear. So go down to the thing you want to affect, button border color. We'll click on it. Desktop is when the mouse is not on it. I'm going to leave it white. If we click on the hover tab, we can have a completely different value. When they hover over it, I'm going to make it orange. I'm going to do the same for the text as well. So if we roll back up to the button text color, there's a little arrow. Remember, if it's not there, you can just roll over it, it'll appear. White, when they're not hovering, desktop tab. When they hover over, we'll make it orange. Fantastic. That's great. Now, the only other thing is I'm going to make this stick up the top here, then move over to the left hand side. And then the other buttons for the other sections want to stack underneath them. So I'm going to give this a little margin on the bottom of maybe two picks. So there's a little separation between each button. So we can close up where it says button there. We can do that in our spacing. It's always where you find margin and padding. On the bottom, I'm just going to give it two pixels. Great. Now you can also decide while we're in the button, whether you want to have this icon, whether you want to have it all the time, not at all, or only when they hover. Defaults only when they hover like this. To change that, if we go back into our button and the custom settings, I could have done this when I was in there. If we roll down, we got a button icon. It says show button icon here. If you don't want to show one at all, even on hover, just turn that to no. Turn it off. Let's find that same icon as we got for our little section above there. There it is. 
I'm going to put that one in there, but I'm going to have it there all the time. To have it there all the time, just roll down. Little button here, only show icon on hover for button. And you can choose whether to put it on the right or the left. Now, one other thing, because I may have different text amounts in each button, but I want them to be the same width. I'm going to give it a fixed width with a bit of custom CSS. And don't worry, it's one simple line. And I'll show you exactly what it is. It's very easy. I'm going to go into my advanced. I'm going to go to my custom CSS tab. I'm going to click on the module elements. In the main element, I can give this a fixed width by just writing width, colon, and the width that I want it. So I'm going to say 150 px for pixels and it'll stay that width on all devices and all of our buttons when we clone this will be that width okay let's save this now and here's an important part we need to go into this row if you want to make it closer the button closer to the bottom of there you can take the padding away from the row but i think that's going to work for me i'm going to go into the row the green tab we need to make this full width if you want your buttons to end up over here. To do that, once you're in the row, design, sizing, here's the width. I'm going to grab it, take it out to 100%. I'm going to copy that, Control C. I'm going to paste it in the max width below, Control V, or just type it in there. As you can see, that's now on the left hand side there. So to make this stick to the top, very easy. We can go over to advanced. We can go down to scroll effects. We can say stick to top. Now watch what happens when I roll up. It's going to stick on the top of there. And I think we'll take the padding away from that row. So we've just got the single button on its own there. To take the padding away, we know how to do that in design and spacing is where we'll find the padding. Let's put a zero in the top there. I hit the chain. Now I'll take the padding away. Now when we stick to the top, there's no gap. Obviously, if you want a bit of a gap, put it in there. But remember that gap will be in all of your buttons. Great. The only other thing is I don't want to see that button at all until it starts to stick up there. So if we save this now and we go back into our button, we'll click on the button dark tab for the module we can now go over to our design and down to filters we can find the opacity filter down here now because we made the row sticky when we hover over now we've got a little pin up here if we click on the pin icon we've got two tabs desktop is when it's not sticky we don't want to see it at all and the pin is when it is sticky we want it to be fully visible so now if I save that, it's just going to appear when it's sticky. Perfect. Now that we've got our first one, I'm going to go into back end mode, clone it and repeat the process. So I've hit my little purple button. We'll go to wireframe view, which is back end mode. How we used to build with Divi back in the day. Here's our section with our two rows, a blur module on the about. I'm going to clone it once by hitting the two little squares. Let's roll down to our next section. We'll give this a different name and ID. Let's give it an admin label services. Now I'll copy that. We'll give it the same ID. Services. Let's make that a little S for the ID. Now we can go into the blurb. Obviously, switch out your content and your title. We'll just switch icons. We want to go into our button for this section. The link this time wants a link to our services section. Although we had a small S on there called be right about the idea or it won't work and it's already sticky so if we just save this we go back to our desktop and we roll down 
There's our about section when it disappears off the top. The button's going to appear. Here's our services section when it disappears off the top. Services button's going to stack underneath. And remember, we gave it that little gap in between, so they've got a bit of separation there. And they're going to stay there to the bottom of the site. So I'll just duplicate that two more times and we're good to go. Okay, well, I put four of them in there. We got our about. We've got our services. We've got our unit cost. And we've got our features. You can keep on going as much as you like. And that's working for me over there. Let's save draft. Exit the Visual Builder, make sure it's going to work on the front end. And we'll roll on down. Here's our first section, the About Us section. When it disappears off the top, there's our first button. Services is next. Second button. Unit cost. And then features. And as you keep going down the site or the page, those are going to stay there. We can go back up to them. We've got our little hover change color to let them know something's happening. Go back up to our features. That one's going to disappear. Go back up to our unit costs. That one's going to disappear. Back up to the services. And finally, back up to the about us. And as you can see, we've got that nice little parallax or fixed background going on in the background there. So there we have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. That really is a nice little feature to add to your site. And as you can see, really easy to do too. Now it's up to you how you style this, whether you want to have those little icons there or not. Make it your own. Come up with something fantastic. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.